Oh. This is bad. This is bad. This is bad. The lead is broken. The fish is caught in the net. That is what Western Port is all about. Nice big snapper like that. Car's parked and it's time to get out of here. We're at Western Port, Stony Point, and while we've done a lot of snapper shows over the years on the show, we've never filmed one in Western Port. It's a tidal situation. We've fished here for whiting and plenty of other species. And for most people, when they think of Western Port, they think of deep water and great big sinkers to catch gummy sharks and snapper. I'm no guru in this part of the world, but one thing I like doing is fishing the shallow water. It means smaller sinkers, the fish bite really hard, and just like anywhere in the world, some really big fish can come out of very shallow water. And this place right here behind me is no exception. We'll get this boat untied and we'll get to it. While I have got some fresh frozen bait, and when I say that, it's some squid that I caught a couple of days ago and some other bits and pieces. Every good fishing trip starts with a little bit of preparation. And in this case, I've just anchored up on a big bank that's sand and weed. It's a gnome whiting area. It is tortoise head bank. I'm gonna put some squid jigs out and fish some little bottom baits, get the burly going and hopefully find some squid, some little salmon and yakkers and stuff like that. Because a bit of fresh bait's always a handy thing. I'll get this anchor in, it's only 1.3 meters deep. Polaroid sunnies make life very easy here. You can see the weed in the sand. I'm just gonna get us into position, drop the anchor, and we'll be right. All right, this will make enough bait. Got a few squid, some gars, a couple of salmon, and we're right on the end of the tide, so I wanna get over to the area that we're gonna fish. He'll do, along with the others, we're out of here. It might look like we're just out in the middle of nowhere, but we're actually just out off Elizabeth Island. Reels back behind us, and down that way is San Remo and Phillip Island where they have the big races every year. It's quite amazing to think that you can be this far offshore in Western Port and we're currently in four and a half metres. However, the good thing in this part of the world, the bottom is just covered in great food. Lots of shell and crabs and fish and stuff going on that makes a great feeding smorgasbord for all sorts of species. I've marked a few snapper through this area. They're sort of like cattle. They're spread out, they're just grazing. And I'm just trying to find maybe a little bit of a lump or a bit of really hard bottom anchor on that because that'll hopefully have fish congregating around it. So far, we're in the right area. I've just got to find the right spot. Just starting to mark a few more fish. There's another one there and they're not tight, but they're, they're tighter than they were. There's probably fish every 20 to 50 metres now, just in a bit of an area here. I've just brought the cursor up just to sort of mark where we are on the GPS. The other thing I'm doing is I'm running 50 kilohertz rather than 200 in this shallow water in Western Port because the water's dirty and stuff like that. And the 50 kilohertz is more powerful than the 200. It's a narrower beam and it cuts down through the water a bit better. And it gives me a clearer picture in this situation. If I go to the 200, I keep picking up every bit of weed and air bubble and it can be hard to distinguish the fish. The 50 is giving me what I'm looking for. I've got the cursor there. I'm going to loop out and around. I'm not gonna go back up over those fish that I've marked because it's very shallow. It's 4.3 meters of water. And a lot of people think that's too shallow for snapper, but it's not. I'm gonna do a big U bolt back up around those fish, a couple of hundred meters away from them. I don't wanna spook them. Slide that anchor in and get back in position. Oh, that's us. I have got a couple of fresh squid that I've caught today, but this is one that's fresh frozen. He's only about a week old. I had this guy starting to thaw out when I was fishing for the squid, and rather than waste him, 
I'll still use it, I'll mix it up a bit. You know, a bit of frozen squid on one rod, bit of fresh squid on the other rod. And you never know which one they'll take. I do like strips of squid just like that for snapper fishing. The rig, very simple. Plastic slider, just like that. Slides on the main line, taking the metal clip off it and I've got just a mono dropper, a 15 pound line. A small sinker, two ounces, which is all you need here. It's just a little trickle of flow. Then coming down to some 40 pound Black Magic Tough Trace and two hooks snelled. This is one of the new C.60 Black Magic hooks. Got that nice cutting point on it. And on the bottom, I've got a KS50. This allows me to quickly rig these baits up. And that's all I do, put that hook straight through the top like that. This guy here, pin him just lightly into the strip like that. Make sure that the bottom hook isn't bending the bait up. There's just that little bit of slack there that is ready for fishing. Fish it in gear, any fish that comes along and eats that, they just get instant hook in the corner of the jaw. Also a bit of mess. It's almost like a gummy. Hmm. I don't know, it's sort of, doesn't know if it's a gummy or a snapper. <laughs> Might be a snapper. Took it very slowly, big sort of just slow wax, which is very much how gummies tend to take a bait. But either way, let's see what it is. Just get to that good part of the day too. Sun's getting low. Try not to get the other rods in because there's every chance, you know, you could get another fish on. I've just been cubing lightly because there's only a tiny bit of tide here. It's more like sort of fishing Port Phillip Bay you know, down towards Mount Martha where you just get a trickle of tide. He's under this rod. I was actually just in the process of checking this bait. There's the shock leader. Ah, oh, it's a snapper. Cool. It's what we've come for. I would not have picked that at the start the way it took that bait. Like I was actually thinking, sweet, here comes a bit of flake. Not a huge fish, but all right. I'll just get that net ready. This is thing fishing this shallow water. It's just about being this bit patient. You know, I'm working on the theory that as it gets dark, the fish are gonna push up out of that deeper water up into this shallow ground, which is basically whiting ground to feed. Well, hang on, what have we got here? I've got, I've got heaps going on here. I've got one of my lines. I've got a soft plastic from someone else. I don't know what is going on there. I'll pop these hooks out. I'll get this guy sorted. There we go, not a big fish, and I'm just gonna cut this rig off. We have an absolute cluster. I've just continued my usual form of making an absolute mess of things. Jig head plastic. Oh my God. Um, I think we need to go to a break. I need to clean this up. We'll be back soon. All right, that is messy but free. Now, certainly not a big snapper, but in snapper terms, that's the size I like to eat. Happy to let the big guys go. So I'm gonna put this one into a nice slurry and eat him later on. I don't think this is a snapper, I really don't. But the world's biggest tangle here. I think this is, I think this is a banjo or a Port Jackson or something. But you never know, you never bust stuff off any time. But in Western Port, there's plenty of fish that guys have thought were stingrays and they come up as 20 kilo mulloway or huge gummy sharks or anything. So I never crack anything off till I see it. Come on. The gear I'm using, it's not overly heavy sort of gear compared to what a lot of people might use in Western Port. It's an eight to 10 kilo prototype stick that I've been working on with the Rapala boys, the new Selena 3 5000, and just 20 pound rainbow braid. That's oh, a little gummy shark. Now this guy's done the old crocodile roll and done himself a bit of a mischief, but that's all right. We'll sort him out. Smash that piece of fresh garfish. We'll get him unwrapped and send him on his way. Now he's well and truly sized for a gummy shark, but little female, I'll send her back to do a bit more growing. 
We might catch her in a few more years when she's bigger. Okay. Now, bait's back in the water. Now after that gummy, this leader's just a little bit frayed. It's probably fine, but I would absolutely cry if I hooked a big fish and lost it because the leader broke. Now, the hooks are still good, and rather than throw them away, I'm actually going to reuse them, chop that bit of leader off, chop this bit off here, and then I've got my leader feeder, 40, 60, 80 pound, 40 and 60 fluorocarbon. Cut myself a piece of leader back into the side pocket. Bottom hook on. Just keep watching these rods. Every time I try and do something, one of them takes off. We just get into that perfect part of the day. Trim the knot. This doesn't take long, guys, but it can make all the difference. Drop that KL60 onto there. And watch how quick we can do this snell. Two hooks about that far apart. Through there, down the shank just like that, 12 or 13 times, up, through, and yes, I haven't got a bait in the water, I know, but I've got three others, and at least I know now, if a fish, and more importantly, a big fish eats this, I'm not going to be worrying about my leader breaking because it was a bit scuffed up. Two hooks, snelled, ready to go, a squid strip, that hook in there, that hook in there, we're fishing. That's the bite you want. That's the bite we're after. So often you get a bite and you go, oh, maybe it is, maybe it is, but when you get the right bite, still just the littlest freckle of light left, and it's just the perfect time for snapper. Coming up on the new moon, I just sort of love this time. Oh, he's a nice little fish. Nice little fish. Now, yeah. Oh, full of beans. Look at that. He's clobbered the actual stinger hook on that. That big KL60 off the snapper snatch is free, and that big KS stinger got him. Now, I'm going to pop this hook out, get this fish back, and get another bait in, because I can tell you now there was plenty more fish on the sounder. There we go. Not a big fish, but certainly a nice one. He's off. Just making the smallest of moves here. A couple of hundred metres, we've just come out, a little bit of a drop, and there's just scattered fish all up behind us here. I'm gonna drop the pick. Problem before was that I just kept getting hassled by stingrays. I was getting bites, but just not the bites you want. So just a small move. It doesn't have to be anything major. And as anglers, I think, you know, and I'm guilty of it a lot of the time, we, we drive over so many fish to find fish. And rather than doing that, I just put the sounder on and just sounded straight out, slight drop, found fish, and fingers crossed, we'll get some action. Head shakes too aggressive. Come on, mate. Now, get this ready. There we go. Come 
Come on. What have we got? Come on, you've got to be a fish. Why that took off? Come on. Oh, it's a nice gummy. That'll do. Sweet. It's the size I like to get them to eat. Hang on, mate. Oh. Oh. This is bad. This is bad. This is bad. The lead is broken. The fish is caught in the net. As the leader broke, he's somehow, he swum headlong into the net and got himself caught. That'll do. I'll take him any way I can. All right, now, sometimes in fishing, you get lucky. That, let me tell you, was more luck than anything else to get this guy. He is absolutely perfect size for eating. Not too big, not too small. And the night's certainly not over. Let's hope there's a few snapper mixed in with this guy as well. Oh, I'll get this guy on ice. Come on, come on, pal. Come on. Oh, what are you doing? Feel snapperish. Not a big fish, I don't think. A lot of head shakes. Giving up the ghost a bit now. And I actually just did something before. The lights were probably a bit high and they were putting quite a beam. Oh, there he goes. Ah, this is a bigger fish, I reckon. What I did was I actually tipped the spotlights down so they angled a little bit more into the boat, putting less flare out over the water. And being that we're in four metres of water, I just thought it might just stop those fish from spooking a little bit if it's a bit bright. I reckon I've done that. And 10 minutes later, we've got ourselves a double hookup. It's almost like Port Phillip Bay style fishing at the moment. Now, this guy's still there. Well, there's that fish out the back. He's all right. He's not huge, but he's okay. I might try and deal with this guy first. Now, if I put that there. Oh, stay away from that line. I actually cracked off the first fish, which was about probably three kilos, because I want to make sure I get this guy, because he, he is the better one. Oh, that's it. Beautiful. I thought I cracked the other fish off, but he's still here. And I saw this guy and went, oh yeah, that's all right, I'll just ditch him. The leader broke off and got caught in, you know, say, oh, that's a small snapper, but still a nice fish. I had a fresh piece of squid that was just a little ring on the snapper snatcher hook. Beautiful fish, aren't they? They really are just a, Cracking species now, slide him back, or am I going to keep him for dinner? Uh, I might keep this guy and I'll let that bigger one go. So this guy's straight into the ice throw, and now I'll sort this guy out. Come on, mate, behave. I'm going to let you go. That is what we came for. It's a heavy fish. Not a monster, but it's just big and heavy. And that is Western Port Snapper, four meters of water. And it just dispels the whole, sorry, I'm just looking over there because I'm just getting another bite on one of the other rods. It just dispels the whole theory of deep water and big sinkers. Because these big fish come up into the shallows to eat because this is where all the bait fish are and the crabs and stuff. I'm just gonna pop him back. Come on, there you go. Too much fun. Now, look at this tangle undone. Got it. Oh, there we go. There goes the other rod. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And, and, there we go. 
I have got one rod in the water. <laughs> got tangles and rigs busted off. The bites are funny. They're just sort of like chewing on them. They're not screaming off with it. Sort of got a bit of weight, this guy. Hasn't done a lot, but he's got that bit of weight. Get that ready. The breeze has started to pick up again, and let me tell you, it's cold. It's spring, it's not really shorts and crocs weather yet. Oh, yeah, they're nice clean fish too. When I say clean, really bright fins and white bellies and stuff, which sort of indicates they've just come in from the ocean. I think that other rod's starting to go too. And I'll snip that hook, and the trick is not to lift those fish up or drag them around while those hooks are caught in their mouth. And although he's got one of those hooks inside his mouth, the best thing to do is cut it off and just pop him back. There we go. And he's just sitting there and he's gone. I'm starting to run low on squid, a good way to make squid last, but also a good way to rig squid. It's quite simply a calamari ring. Single hook rig, get your calamari, cut him into a ring, just like that. Then pin that hook straight through the very end. It couldn't be any simpler. Plenty of things it does. Smells good, looks good, because it's a nice bright white bait. Great hook exposure, doesn't spin in the current, and fish love to eat them. As you can see, the boat's clean, the bait board's clean. Getting ready to head home. And this guy came along. Be big. Be big. Be a big one that's not doing a lot yet. Now, I'll just go around there. Keep these other baits in. It's one thing I always do. Keep the baits in while I'm cleaning the boat up. Because it's amazing how often you catch those fish when you're ready to head home. These are. Fish. That's a great way to finish the session. Yeah, that's a beautiful way to finish up. That is what Western Port is all about. Ugh. Nice big snapper like that. Clean fish, clean boat, as you can see. The bait board's tidy. Everything's tidy. I was getting ready to go home. Left those rods in the water. And it's paid off now. He was chewing on it just like a very small fish. And that is an absolute belter of a way to finish a Western Port snapper session. Shallow water, big fish, heaps of fun.